Hey, Tiger Big Hills, it's so good to see you today. And we hope that today's service can be a blessing to you. If you've got something to praise God for, why don't you share that with us by going to our website and clicking on the link and sharing a praise and prayer report with us. We hope this message encourages you, empowers you, and maybe you can share it with your world and help them on their journey. Enjoy today's message. Uh, and we're in this uh, second week, thank you so much, of our series called Citizens of Heaven. And uh, just one more time, don't you think Lindsay did a phenomenal job last week? I, I re-preached a sermon on prayer. I watched it online and then I re-preached it. Everyone thought I was amazing. Um, I obviously gave God the glory. So uh, thank you for that, Linz. And But uh, we're starting week two. Next week, we are starting to teach in this series about the end times. And I think maybe churches get it wrong. We miss the mark when we think apocalyptic books that we teach from are just for uh, theological literature. No, it's not intellectual. Uh, We're not just growing in intellect. When you understand that the Apostle John wrote these apocalyptic books to awaken the church, to understand the signs, seasons, and times, like the sons of Issachar, we'll know which way to go. So we're going to teach for the next couple weeks, probably two or three uh, weeks on the end times, um, about eternity and what God teaches about the days that we're living in right now. Today, everyone say today, we're answering the question, what happens when we die? The stats are in. One out of one people will not make it. For those of you who took standard grade maths like me, that's 100%. If those of you who even struggled like standard grade maths like me, that's everyone. <laughs> You're like, what are you really trying to say? <laughs> There's no gambling. We all know we don't make it out alive. Be very encouraged today on the Sunday morning. We don't make it out alive. We make it out here alive, but of life, one out of one, 100%. And so the question is not if, the question is when, and the question is where. Every single person you have ever locked eyes with will look at today or ever will lock eyes with will spend eternity in one of two places. What we do with our lives can impact where we and others go forever. So today I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would take His Word and plant it deep in your heart and that you would have great revelation of these eternal realities. God would speak to you in a mighty way. We're not attending a service, just attending a program or ticking boxes. We are meeting with the living King. We are receiving from His Word today into our hearts and lives. Come on, I invite you to pray with me this morning. Lord, we thank You that You are here. Your presence is here. When the King is present, darkness is absent. We pray, Holy Spirit, you would work deep in our heart, shift, stretch, move, and challenge us to live without restraint for the kingdom of heaven. That, Lord, we would have a greater understanding of these eternal realities. And, and Lord, you would help us step out of our comfort zone. If we've grown familiar or comfortable with, we've got this whole church thing waxed in Jesus' name, I pray that we would have a great revelation of heaven and a great revelation of eternity. And that would make us move in a direction that would bring you more glory. I lift anyone up right now that's downcast, feeling a little worried or anxious. You would speak courage into their heart to know that we're on the winning team, that you go ahead of them and set them up for victory. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Well, it's been a little while since you may have heard this phrase, but turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it looks like you've lost some weight. Neighbor, it looks like you lost some weight. I tried to do that in Zambia. It didn't go down very well. (laughs) Different crowd. Come on, somebody. We are ready for God's Word. Well, I believe good leadership, good leadership attacks ambiguity. Because where you're uncertain, there's no deep conviction. But clarity, the greater the clarity, the deeper the conviction. So today, we know that to be clear is to be kind. We're going to be very kind, to put it nicely. But we are trusting God that in the clarity, you'll get a deeper conviction about what happens when we die, about these two eternities that every single person who has ever lived, living, or ever will live, will spend in. And the decisions you make while your time here on earth, while you have this time, will determine where we go. And so when I answer this question for myself, not when I repeated someone else's answer, because that's what we can do. We know the right answer. But when I answer this question, what happens when I die for myself? Like when I hold this revelation, it changed the trajectory of my life. I wasn't just repeating what I heard or repeating what I was told to say, when I had this revelation drop, come from me, from, from here, this is your head, shoulders, knees, and toes, here we go, when it moved from here to here, and I wasn't repeating what I heard, I was repeating what I believed, I promise you, it changed my whole life, 
In fact, it set me free. I believed and I was spiritually free, but it set me free from the paralysis of multiple priority. Have you ever been in a situation where everything's a priority? Well, then nothing is. The enemy doesn't say God is not important. He just says everything is just as important. And what he does is he paralyzes you to make good decisions to say, well, this is actually of greater worth than that. The enemy wants to say that every, everything has equal value, but that's not what the Bible teaches. Eternal things have greater value than temporary things. Say amen. And so we're going to live for eternal things, things that outlast you and me, that last forever and ever and ever. And we're going to live for those things because those things hold more value. When I answered this question was the day that I said yes to the call of ministry and forsook all my other ambitions. It set me free because I wasn't like trying to think about what's most important. I now knew what was most important and I want to live for that. I decided, well, if heaven is real, I'm going to make sure that all my friends, all my family, everyone I meet goes to heaven and not to hell. That's what I just decided. I said, I'm going to dedicate my whole life just to telling people there's another way to live. That the kingdom of heaven is accessible and available right now. Not because you got all your ducks in a row. Not because you grew up in a Christian home. but Because Jesus came to save you. And I decided to make that my trajectory for the rest of my life. I want to say as a church, as leading this church, serving you, that we don't, we're not a church that does missions. We're a church on a mission. And we're on a mission to plunder hell and populate heaven. And so this will not be your narrative. You will not have a deep conviction unless you get clear and answer this for yourself. What happens when I die. It needs to be personal. You need to answer this for yourself. So you're ready to receive God's word this morning? Let's start with believers, not believers. Some of you guys need to be delivered from that demon. <laughs> sure. I know some of you Swifties. Anyway, we, that's another demon. We just, we don't talk about them. Let's start with, with believers. What happens to believers when they die? We're going to be teaching largely from Luke chapter 16, and we'll be referencing from that portion of scripture. It's about two men, a rich man and a poor man. The poor man knew God. The rich man did not follow the Lord, had nothing to do with with what was in their pockets, had everything to do with who was in their heart and Lord of their life. And it says from verse 22, it says, finally the poor man died and was carried by angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. Where did the poor man go? To heaven. Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Jesus speaking to the man, the criminal beside him on the cross, Jesus replied, I assure you, everyone say today, like you mean it today. Today, you will be with me in paradise today. Continues to say in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, they don't have the scripture. It says, yes, we are fully confident. Everyone say fully confident. Like you mean it, fully confident. And we would rather be away from these earthly bodies for then we will be at home with the Lord. Another translation says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What happens to believers when we die? We go to be with the Lord today. There is no waiting time. There is no waiting period. We are in the presence of God today. Believers go into the presence of God where they celebrate. They receive a glorified body. Come on, Jesus. Some of us received it early. where they celebrate and await the final rewards judgment. This happens to believers. What happens to unbelievers? Those who have yet to give their heart to the Lord. It says unbelievers go to a waiting place, separated from God, where they await their final judgment. This place is called Hades or Sheol. We know it as hell. This is the waiting place. Hell is the waiting place. And after the final judgment, there's another place called Gehenna, which is the eternal lake of fire where there is separation from God for all of eternity. Believers go straight to heaven in the presence of God who await the final reward ceremony. It's going to be a ceremony of rewards. Unbelievers, those who do not know Jesus yet, go to a waiting place called Hades where they await their final judgment and then go to Gehenna, separated from God for all eternity eternity. To be clear is to be kind. The enemy functions in ambiguity and chaos. There are no blurred lines in heaven. There is no uh, lack of clarity in Christ. Jesus wants you to know where you stand today because what you believe about eternity will determine how you live today. What you truly believe, should I say, about eternity will determine how you live today. If you don't truly, if if you just believe everything's going to end well and be good and all those type of good things, then that's going to determine how you live today. 
But if you believe that the decisions you make today will actually impact someone else's eternity, including your own, you live differently. You live differently. I want to say that everything is God's creation, but only, you only become a child of God when you accept His Son. We are not all children of God. We are all God's creation, but we become His children when we follow His Son. Is this making sense this morning? It's not the absence of sin. It's the presence of Christ that gets us to heaven. The Bible continues to say about the rich man. It says, Luke chapter 16, verse 22. And the time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him away over inside. The rich man also died. So one out of one. My stats are sound. Both of them. Into the, the rich man's in the grave, poor man's in the grave, big guys in the grave, skinny guys in the grave, tall guys, people with hair. Same place with people. Know. Come on now. I just want to set this equal. Amen. Rich man also died and was buried in Hades where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. With Lazarus by his side. It's interesting that the rich man's response, he says, please, I continue to say, please send someone from verse 27. I want to encourage you to read this chapter by yourself this week. He says, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so they will not also come to this place of torment. What was his response to this occasion? Very real occasion was evangelism. His response was, please, I don't want anyone else to go here. I don't want anyone else to come here. I've got five brothers I love. Please send somebody. I believe that when you got saved, the Lord had someone else in mind. You know why you work where you work? Where you study where you study, you live where you live? It wasn't just because it was convenient, because the Lord has placed you for a purpose. And you are that somebody that he sent. You are that ambassador to his kingdom. It's not because we live perfectly. It's about because we know the one who died and saved us. And we get to share this good news with other people. There's another way to live. You have been sent. Like this man would beg uh, beg, uh, Abraham, I'm sure he would beg you too. Go and let them know. And it's not about preaching on a pulpit. It's about living your life to the glory of God. Whatever it is, eating, drinking, do it to the glory of God. Now, in the same way that we will find out that there are degrees of rewards in heaven, there are also degrees of punishment in hell. So what you do on earth, whether you're a believer or unbeliever, will impact your rewards if you're a believer or your punishment if you do not know the Lord. It says in Luke chapter 12, verse 47, verse 48, it says, The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready, or does not do what the master wants, will be beaten with many blows. How many people grew up in the 80s and 90s? Say amen. Come on. Sure. Healing. Amen. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with only a few blows. So it's a sibling that you just roped in. They didn't know they weren't supposed to do that. They'll also get a puck. Anyway, a few blows. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrust, entrusted with much, much more will be asked. And so what we see here is that you need to be a good steward of what you've been given. You'll be judged on what you know. So in heaven, if you're a believer, there's, you'll be given different degrees of rewards. If you do not know the Lord, there are actually different degrees of suffering that you'll experience in accordance with how you live. It's not what you know, it's what you do with what you know. Now, when we pass away there'll be two thrones. The first throne, every single person who has ever lived, living, or will live, stands in front of. This is the great white throne of God. At this throne, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess. If my pants wasn't so tight, I would bow. I was like, okay, Lord, don't want breakthrough in that regard. I got distracted there. I thought, woo, okay. I had a, they call it chima. It's pup. All I ate was pup. Samuel, so praise God. Um, at the great white throne of God, every single person will bow their knee and confess. Whether you believe in Jesus or not is irrelevant. Every single person, whether you believe in Christ or not, will bow your knee and you will confess that Jesus is king. At this throne, he says he will separate the goats from the sheep. The sheep being believers, the goats being unbelievers. And we'll be separated for eternity. The second throne, only believers will stand in front of the second throne. It's called the the Beamer Seats of Christ. This is the reward ceremony. This is when we stand before the Lord and He rewards us for what we did as believers. So what gets rewarded? I'm so glad you asked. I got the answer right here. I'm just going to read it for you guys. It's great. What gets rewarded? Attitudes and motives get rewarded. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 
58, the condition of your heart. So you may say, I love you with your hands, but if I hate you in your heart, the Bible says you commit murder. It's intentions. Prayers, Matthew 6, 6, get rewarded. Giving, generously, Matthew 6, 20, to others gets rewarded. Good deeds done for the right reasons, Matthew 6, 1 to 4, gets rewarded. Compassion and justice gets rewarded. Evangelism, 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, sharing your faith gets rewarded. Character and integrity, I call it hidden worship. When no one else is looking, you choose the hard right over the easy wrong, gets rewarded. Nothing is hidden in the sight of God. He's going to reward you. When no one said thank you, God saw it all. It says persevere in Galatians 6, 9, those who do not give up. Do not grow weary, for in due time you will receive the reward. You'll get rewarded. Persecution, Matthew 5, 10, for his name's sake, will be rewarded. Now, we don't do these things for salvation. We do these things from salvation. Religion says you need to do these things to be saved. Relationship says I do these things because I'm saved. That's the difference. I want to say as believers, it's not just about getting in. The Bible says some of us will get in, but we'll smell a little bit like smoke. Chesterfield, unfiltered. <laughs> sure. Some of you, Starbucks and blue. <laughs> See, you smell a little bit like smoke. I tell you what, I want to get to heaven. And in the race that I'm running, I want to come first place. And it's not comparative to anyone else's race. Because we'll find now in Matthew 25, who gets rewarded is the faithful. All the faithful. It's about the, the parable of the, the three servants. The one who got the five, three, and two. One. One. There was no two. There was no two. See, you can't even come second. The five coins, the three coins, and the one coin. The master gives it to these three servants, and he goes away, and he says, put it to work. He comes back a time later. Some of you may know this parable. And he says, well, what did you do with what I gave you? And the, one of the five says, well, I've earned five more. Well, he says, Come, be with me. Come celebrate for all eternity, for you have been a faithful steward. It says, well done, good and faithful servant, steward. The one with three bags says, well, he said, well, what did you, what did you do with what I gave you? He says, well, I've got three more bags. He said, well, that's 100% return. That's a good investment. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come be with me for all of eternity. Here are your rewards. The one that was only given one bag or one coin says and brings it, listen, you gave me this and I was too scared. I knew you to be a hard man, so I didn't do anything with it, so I'm giving you back. That's like when we live our life. He gave us life, and then we die, and we just say, hey, here's the life you gave me. I'm just giving it back. I didn't do anything with it. He says, you're evil and wicked. He says, I gave you life. Why didn't you take a risk? He says, even it gives a reference like, you should have just invested in it to earn a little bit of interest. In other words, you should have just got planted to earn a little bit of interest. Just do something with your life to get a return for the kingdom of God. It says, actually, what was given to him was taken away and given to others who were faithful. I want to tell you that God has given you. He's not comparing. He didn't say, oh, you only gave me six bags. This guy gave me 10 bags. The 10 bags are better than the six bags. No, 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 no. He said, what did you do with what I gave you? He didn't compare to anyone else. Some of you compare yourself to other people. If only I was doing that, or I could speak like this, or maybe I was like that. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a three in the five coins. What has he put in your hand today? That's what you'll be held accountable for says, where much is given, much is required. We'll, so if he only gave you five, be faithful with five. But if he gave you one, be faithful with one. Does this make sense? So two, great white throne, the beamer seat of God. We need to be those faithful people. What you do with your life, the decisions you make, they really count for eternity. My question is, what's holding you back from using that one, three, or five coins in your life? What fears are holding you back? What, what insecurities are holding you back? I'm praying that the Holy Spirit in this next week will speak to you because next week sign up Sunday. Listen, it's more than writing your name down on a piece of paper to put out some chairs on a Sunday morning. It's about teaching yourself that we are part of a bigger family, extending God's kingdom, that I'm part of his army, I'm an ambassador, I'm part of, I might be a hand, I might be a foot, I'm part of the body and the body works together for the glory of God. It's not about doing this duty or that duty. It's about understanding that God wants to use you. You are placed for a purpose. Don't be a spectator anymore. Trust God to speak to you this week. I want to challenge you to trust God to answer this question for yourself. What happens when I die? Two realities. And now how do I live my life differently with what my answer might be? It changed my whole trajectory, and I'm praying it'll change yours. If you're born once, you die twice. But if you're born twice, you die once. This is the truth. This is the, 
what the Bible teaches, and I'm praying this is the truth that sets you free. It set me free. There are some things that are more important than others. We've been to Zambia a, a couple times, many times. The team can join us and on stage. We're going to worship for a moment. We've been to Zambia a couple times, and this time taking my children to Zambia changed the whole experience for me, changed everything. I, I thought I had my priorities right, but then when I see my children ministering and sharing their faith, I thought, wow, I need to go to a whole nother level. Like, this is truly what we were made to do. All this other stuff is surely just garnishing on the outside. That's just the peas. This is the steak. This is what we're here for, to raise up the next generation. I didn't give birth to my children. Kelly did. But we didn't have children. I'm just, and she reminds me, <laughs> I gave birth to these kids. You can might as well get them to school. I was like, okay. It's like she always uses that card. <laughs> I gave birth to them. Might as well make coffee. I'm like, okay. I had a part to play. See, our, st- our students joined the second service. So, oh, no. Anyway. Lord, please heal me. Please, Lord. See, there's still parts of me that need to be redeemed. No one arrives. I don't know where I am right now. I heard this one guy say, Are you, where was I, Lindsay? Kenny gave birth to the kids. Yes, she did. But we didn't have children to populate hell. We had children to populate heaven. I want to say we believe as a church for every one of your children, no matter how young or old they are. We met with uh, Uncle Rob in the first service, and uh, he's a great guy. He's, he's Austrian. He's going back to Austria for a couple months. His eldest is 47 years old. Doesn't matter, old or young, we trust for all our children's salvation. We're here to populate heaven and plunder hell. Every person you'll ever meet will spend eternity in one of two places. And you can have an impact on what decisions they make. There's two things I want to hear when I go to heaven. The first thing is I want to hear the laughter and I want to hear the joy of people who have fallen asleep in Jesus before me. I want to get there and I want to see my family members who have fallen asleep in Christ before me celebrate and rejoice. They were like, he made it. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to see people giving money how oh, while well, I lost that bet. <laughs> I want to see people celebrating. Come on. For, I will never be separated from them ever, ever, ever again. That's why Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says that we can rejoice with hope for there will be a re- reuniting with those lost ones in heaven who have fallen asleep in Christ. This is why we can celebrate at Christian funerals. It's because we will see each other again if they knew the Lord. The first thing I want to hear is the celebration of people who have fallen asleep in Christ before me. The second thing I want to hear is, well done, good and faithful servant. I died for you, and you chose to raise your family, build the church, serve other people, raise that, you know, to live beyond yourself. I died for you, and you decided to live for me. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come be with me for all of eternity. That's the two things I want to hear. I'm praying those are the two things that you want to hear too. If those are the two things that you want to hear, it changes the decisions that we make here today. It should change the way that I live my life. These other things go down the list and eternity goes up on the list. This is what we live for. The late Timothy Keller said this of believers. He said that the only thing that death can do to the believer is make life infinitely better. The only thing that death can do to the believer is make life infinitely better. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, death now just becomes a door. It just becomes something we step through. And we can anticipate great reward. Not because we get it right. Listen to me, because we get it wrong. It's not the absence of sin, but the presence of Christ that allows us access to heaven. My question is, what is your next step? What is the Lord asking you to do? Is He inviting you into the kingdom of light? to receive him as Lord and Savior, take that next step. If you're in the kingdom, is he asking you, what are you doing with your five bags? What are you doing with your three bags? What are you doing with your one bag? Because it's not what you know, it's what you do with what you know that makes the difference. What happens when you die? What happens when I die? Is an answer that only you can have. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit would have used his word today to plant that deep in your heart and that you wouldn't be paralyzed with all these things. What's the most important you would know what's most important to the Lord. So we're going to worship together now, and we're going to sing for a moment or two longer. And 
I'm praying that as we sing out, the Holy Spirit would just take this word and cement it in your life for all eternity. So come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's worship God and sing out to the King. Cause all I want is to live within your love, be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper. Lord, I will open up again. 
for the church and for our services. I was praying for Zambia. I was praying for our missionaries. I was praying for the future of our church. And, and it's, I wanna, I, I, I'm absolutely convinced the future of our church is bright. We continue to get stronger. We reach more people. More lives change. Salvations. I mean, it's wonderful to see the next generation stepping up for God. It's just, it's absolutely incredible to see what's happening in the life of our church, the testimonies. But in my quiet time, I was reading John chapter 5, and it's about the man who laid the gates on his mat. For 38 years, the gate was called Bethesda uh, uh, or Bethsaida, uh, another translation, and, and it's called the House of Mercy. For 38 years, he lay next to the House of Mercy, but didn't receive healing. And he needed to get up off his mat, and, and Jesus said, no, why, don't you, why aren't you healed? And once a year, an angel used to come and stir the water, and whoever climbed in would get healing. And he said, everyone else gets ahead of me. And I just maybe felt like some people here today, maybe you feel like that's your story. Like everyone, everyone else gets it. Everyone else gets the healing. Everyone else gets the breakthrough. Everyone else gets the, you know, the nod or everyone else cracks the team. Or I feel like I'm not the one. But Jesus sees you and he loves you. And I believe he's speaking to you today. He says you need to get up and, and pick up that mat and walk. Well, do you know how do I do that? I believe it's when you abide in him. It says in Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll teach you how to have a real rest. Matthew 6 tells us that what will worry add a single day to our life? No, it won't. 1 Peter 5 tells us that we need to cast our burdens on Him because He cares for you. Your worries are actually worship when you give it to the Lord because you're actually saying, Lord, I know you can do something about this. And maybe you've been laying on your mat for a very long time and you think that's your story. I pray that Jesus would speak to you and you'd receive this today, that that's me on the mat and today's the day. Jesus says, get up and walk. I do this by abiding in Him, giving Him my worries, hanging over again and again and again. And that's how I walk. And the mat now becomes a testimony. It used to be the thing that I lay on, but now it's a thing that gives God glory. That mess actually has really become my message to say, if God can do it for me, He can do it for you. The same God that answered my prayers is the same God that can answer yours. And I pray that you'd be encouraged by that today. I want to pray for some people. Maybe your next step is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come on, let's, let's close our eyes. Christians, I want you to pray. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, you, and you don't have a firm security knowing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then I want you to pray this prayer in your heart and confess it with your mouth. We're all going to do it together, but I pray that is you, that you would respond with faith today to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that you can answer the question, what happens when I die, with a firm, solid answer. Not the one that you're repeating, the one that you believe. So come on, let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me and as me. Today, I receive you as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean and make me new. By faith, I declare I'm a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. Come on, let's invite the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to lead me and guide me. Show me your ways. And I promise to worship you and serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' precious name, and all God's people said, can we celebrate with anyone who may have prayed that prayer for the first time? Oh, we can do better than that, Tiger Bird. Come on. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says, that cannot lie, that you're a new creation. It says He's washed you clean. He's made you new. You are going to heaven. But I also want to say you've got a great destiny here on earth. We want to encourage you to go to our website. There's a Following Jesus course that you can take that course. If you don't have a Bible, we have plenty. You can come to the front over here. We'd love to pray with you and give you the free gift of God's Word. And uh, if you're not in a view group, prepare your hearts to on sign up Sunday. We also got some... We really hope that message was helpful for you. 
We don't want anyone to do life alone. And so we'd love to invite you to be part of our church. Join us on a Sunday morning at 8.45 or 10.15, right at Tigerberg High School in the northern suburbs of Eton. Join us, be a part of the life-giving church, and maybe connect to a group that you can be part of. We want to make sure that every person knows what their next step is. And maybe your next step is being a party starter. That's for anyone that's made a commitment to follow Jesus today. On our website, you can follow the links and you'll be able to do a course that helps you understand Jesus, calling Following Jesus. And don't forget that each week, each one, reach one.